Hey everybody, this is the last week of our Psalms section. We've had three, so this is like the last part of them. So essentially Psalms 87 to 150. Although again, in the Come Follow Me manual, there is recommendations on just to read some of them, and those are the ones they focus on. And while we might focus on the same themes, I kind of have picked a little different again, mainly because what I felt inspired as I always say, I pray about these things. I don't just make these decisions based on what I like. Because uh, there's ones from this week that I like. Uh, but that's not what I felt would be good to teach. So, there we go. I picked five little sections. Um, and we'll go through those. But this is all sort of around thanksgiving and praise. Um, and carrying on from like last week, which was lamenting. And we're going to get into lamentations, which you think is going to be... Not lemmingtons, which is a nice cake, but lamentations, which I think is all like crying and sadness. It's really not. It's just, it's that whole concept of being able to trust the Lord, be like crazy frustrated with him at the same time, um, have joy in the things that you already have, but desperately want fixes for the things that you don't. So it's like that whole ball of emotions that exists at one time where you can't see the future and you're praying to see it, but you honestly at the same time do trust God and do trust Jesus, but you're just not there yet. So it's kind of working that whole concept. So this is like more thanksgiving. Last week was more the lamenting. Um, but this is praise and thanksgiving and, and how you can do that and how that in effect does actually strengthen that relationship with Christ so that you can then feel... Uh, just just feel more of that closeness and that comfort when those frustrations and those lamentations are not being heard. So there you go. Anyway, that's the introductional part. Um, so we're going to start off in Psalm 92, verses 1 to 3. There's a scripture tome here, scriptures. Um, this is this whole thing is like a psalm or a song for the Sabbath day. So think of a, like an ancient hymn book here we, we're going back to. Um, so it says... It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night, upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp with a solemn, solemn sound. So, I don't know what the instrument with the ten strings is. Maybe that's a type of harp. And I don't really know what a psaltery is. Could have looked that up, but I didn't. Um... So, you know, let me know. Um, and upon the heart with a solemn sound. So, you know, like, there's ways to give that thanksgiving. Um, but it's praise and thanksgiving in your way. And I'm like, how do you show praise and thanksgiving on the Sabbath day? Because isn't this always that fun topic that comes up often, and in Sunday school especially, sometimes Preston and Relief Society classes or whatever class you go to, they'll come up, how do you observe a Sabbath day? Or how do you give praise and thanksgiving on a Sabbath day? Now, traditionally, we all go to church and partake of the sacrament and have classes. During COVID, we couldn't do that. We did that at home, and there were different ways we did that. But generally, on the, on the time that's not that church allotted time, what are you doing? Because for everyone, it's going to be different. And you get into these lessons, and they have this whole oh, well, we do this because this prophet said this, and we do this, and we don't have TV, um, or we only watch church things on TV, and that's okay for us. You know what, like, and I've said this before, there's no wrong or right thing, really. Um, it's what's going to suit you, oops, weird here, it's what's going to suit you and your family and your situation. Um, we try not to travel on a Sabbath day because, like, we don't really want other people to be working and we'll encourage that or to go shopping and do that kind of thing. Uh, sometimes, though, you find that the air travel is so much exceptionally cheaper that the whole living providently outweighs the traveling on a Sabbath day. So it's going to be different for everyone and how do you do that? But how do you show praise and thanksgiving on a Sabbath day? Not how do you keep the Sabbath day holy? But how do you show praise and thanksgiving on a Sabbath day? Yeah. Weird shadows. Anyway, sorry. Um, yeah, shouldn't be looking at myself. Should be talking to you. So, how do you show praise and thanksgiving on a Sabbath? So it's good to give thanks. Sing, dance, play music. However you appropriately choose to show praise and thanksgiving. However you do it. Um, some of us particularly like church music. Doesn't mean to say that we all have the same taste in church music. 
Um, my mum would really like to listen to the hymns. My grandparents used to listen to what we'd call the Motab. Now they're called the choir at Temple Square or something like that anyway. But yeah, Tabernacle Choir. Um, that's what they like to listen to. Uh, quite honestly, that's that was just like, unless you see them live, like, you know, on a scratchy record with bad speakers, is just like, right? That's not my taste. My taste is somewhat different. So our taste in music changes, and it will for your family. And just because it's not an LDS artist does not mean that it's not appropriate, so keep that in mind too. Um, and dancing. Dance around. If your kids want to go outside and play on a Sabbath day, if that's what's right for them and your family, that's okay. It's a good way, as long as you are showing praise and thanksgiving for this beautiful Sabbath day. It's also good for the soul, for our mental health, to be able to have this expression of just joy and like thanks. We get a whole day to just say thank you for the other six days. Thank you for everything, even though some of it really sucked. We're thankful for it all because it's going to help us grow and help us become so it's a, it's a good thing to do. It's a cleansing. Like, uh, in our house, I'll have a rest. And honestly, I'll just watch some um, Netflix because that's what's good for me. I'll watch church stuff in the morning. We'll go to church. And then the few hours I have before dinner, I'll, I'll just watch something on Netflix. Just put my feet up and just have me time, quiet time. Ugh, like, nothing else. Um, and if that's taken up with something else, then it is. Sometimes I ended up doing taken up with seminary prep, which is great. But then that leaves me just feeling like I haven't had time to really give that praise and thanksgiving because it feels like I've been working so while some people feel seminary prep on a Sunday is a good Sabbath day activity for me it feels like working and I'd rather do it on the Saturday or the week before um there you go anyway so solemn doesn't mean drab or depressing either it means respectful so here when it says like on a solemn instrument it doesn't mean it all has to be like sad and like quiet no it just means respectful um you know like and, and that's going to feel different for you too. And it's depending on your relationship with Christ as to what that respect is. And the Sabbath day is your thankful day. It's your day of thanks. Um, not just Thanksgiving like they have in the States for one day, whenever that is, somewhere in November. Um, or a, a birthday or a Christmas or whatever that we have thanks on or, or Easter even. It's a day every week. How great is that? We get a day every week to just be thankful um, no matter what else has gone on, right? It's kind of cool. So, however, bring joy into a daily life by showing praise and thanksgiving every day. And then on the Sabbath day, you can really turn it on. It's pretty cool. Um, there's some really good ways to do that. If any of you got any, like, super suggestions that you love of what you guys do on a Sabbath day to show praise and thanksgiving, not about keeping it holy, because that's different for everyone, and so is this. We want, how do you show praise and thanksgiving? So, I'll go to church and I'll sing, even though I sing terribly badly. I don't care. Um, I don't sing by myself from the pulpit or anything, but, you know, when we sing hymns, I just sing. No, I'm just, I, I feel that I'll talk to everybody. I like like that interaction with people who have, like, the same values and same focus as me. Um, even though for a, a good portion of them, if we didn't go to church, I probably wouldn't cross paths with them. But it's... It's that same values and um, it's a place of belonging. It feels like, you know, going home to my people. It feels like this is my place. Um, even more so in the temple. But we don't do the temple on the Sabbath day. We do chapels on the Sabbath day in our homes, which should be spiritually in tune like the temple as much as we can be, depending on our home situation, of course. Anyway, um, Elder James E. Faust a wonderful man, he said, keeping the Sabbath day holy is much more than just physical rest. It involves spiritual renewal and worship. So for those that say, oh, I don't need to go to church on the Sabbath, I'm just going to do something at home. No, you need to go to church as much as it can be scary. Of course, through COVID we couldn't, but you could have home church. You've got to do a church thing. It's that commitment to worship on the Sabbath that brings that relationship in with Christ. Um, yeah, anyway. There you have it. So, that's the first one. Hang around for the others. We're going to talk about making a joyful noise. I'll see you there.